Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode of the Main Street Business Podcast with yours truly, Mark Kohler, and my amazing co-host, Matt Sorensen, a.k.a. The Birthday Boy! <laughs> That's right, baby. We're 41, mm. yeah, 41 years old, young, however you want to look at it, I guess. Wow, that was a little bold to claim yourself young at 41. Yeah, you know, you know you're old when you refer to yourself in years young. <laughs> yeah, Corey, uh, do you think, like, let me ask Corey. I, Corey is 41 I mean, young. No, Corey says you are over the hill. That's a millennial yeah, think, just giving you a shot at reality. I think I need like an AARP membership before I can refer to myself in years young. Oh, what am, what's happening to me? Yeah. Um, no, it's great. Uh, Happy birthday. Great birthday weekend. Saw Mark come down. Uh, my girlfriend put together a cool uh, birthday little party of sorts. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Mark got me a cowboy hat. Do, mm. do you call it a cowboy hat or is it just a hat? Like, do cowboys oh. call it cowboy hats or they just call it a hat? Well, I think they call it a cowboy hat. Because, see, farmers okay. farmers okay. are more of a trucker hat. John Deere. Yeah. But, but ranchers, it probably just hat. But for us, we need to def- – We I think we need to be definitive. You know, yeah. It I was think, a yeah. John Dutton Yellowstone felt brown yeah. cowboy hat. And yeah, so maybe. You look yeah. good. And I got a belt buckle, too. So there's a little theme going with it. Mark wants to, you know, make make me a real man, cowboy. He like, you know, you gotta be a little more tough, I guess. So yeah, when in Rome. So well, happy birthday, Mr. Sorensen. Thank you. So okay, well, today's episode uh, for those that have not listened to our podcast before, welcome. We try to give a tax and legal tip uh, each week. We were going to do the open forum today. We had a lot of questions in the hopper. We will still address those next week. But we felt we needed to cover the trifecta. This is a big deal. Mm. And we've had some requests to say, can you explain the trifecta? I don't have a YouTube video on it. I'm going to write an article tonight on it. I got it. I got to knock it out. So, but this Mm. is every attorney that comes to our office literally is a brand new associate. And even our paralegals, we train them on the trifecta. Yeah. It's a big deal. And this is really the the brainchild of Mark Kohler. I mean, it really was oh, of like, and it's, it's a, it's simple and, uh, but it's also the most effective way for even the most complex client we would, we would face on how to separate out tax planning, asset protection planning, knowing what goes where, how it coordinates together. Um, and it's, there's just, they're the really family planning. Like, you forgot the trifecta. You oh. said tax planning. <laughs> Asset protection, and then family and estate. There you go. You know, That's so because exactly. you ain't gonna live forever, so this thing will need to carry on. Look at that. <laughs> Matt pulled an ain't ain't gonna live. See, you look at you get a cowboy hat, and within seven days you're thrown down. Ain't gonna live forever. Yeah. I, see, it's already had an effect on you. Ah, oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well. Okay, I'm before, be, I reckon I'll be saying that one too. Reckon, reckon, reckon. That's, yeah. How are how are your crops doing? I reckon pretty per, pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think of, I think of Ryan Hamilton. If any of you have not seen the Netflix special, this is your homework, everybody. This week, there's a Netflix stand-up comedy special called Happy Face, and it's Ryan Hamilton. Ryan Hamilton. Think of the play Hamilton that's taking the country by storm for the last three to five years. But Ryan Hamilton, he's from Idaho and now living in New York. And he talks about the juxtapose relationship and difference between the two. So funny. Um, So I'd really recommend all of you uh, get over uh, and watch that Netflix special. It's really, really fun. Okay. So if you haven't been on our show before, we really, really want to help you build wealth, save taxes, protect it, leave it plan it we're the lovers of the legal community not the fighters we're there to protect you make it work i really really love my job and i know matt does and so we've had two new attorneys join our firm this last month and it it's been emotional for them because they're like this is so fun this is what i dreamed of doing as a lawyer is actually helping people plan their future and they've left the litigation world and they love it so yeah no one wants to fight battles and even when you win a lawsuit you still really feel like you lost it's such a pain so um but this is the time and i think as we go through this to 
to kind of sit back and look at your own business, your own assets, and also for those planning out, you know, you're making some business plans yourself, you want to get some rental properties, you want to grow your wealth, you want to plan for your future, like this is how to bring it all together, okay. the trifecta. Now I've got a little tax tip. I don't know if I have a legal tip today, but I'm going to just throw it on a quick tax tip. We sometimes have a guitar riff before the tax tip. I don't know why we got rid of that. I kind of liked it. Eh, you thought yeah. it was cheesy, didn't you? Eh, it was a little cheesy, but... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, just... Yeah. I'm a team player. If my partner's out all, on, all in, I'm not going to do it, so... Okay. All wicka, right. wicka, wow! No. Okay, so no guitar riff. Here's <laughs> my tax tip. A lot of people have been asking me this. And that is... Why did Justin Bieber cancel his tour stop this July in Vegas? No, that's not what he's been asking. Okay, what everybody's <laughs> been asking is Joe Biden and his tax plan. What's going to happen? What's coming down the pipe? Well, it actually was a breath of fresh air this week. Uh, about three weeks ago, President Biden and his uh, team, I guess for lack of a better word, kind of laid out their plans of what they want to pass in Congress this year. And that's kind of how politics work. You got it. They got to float it. They got to let everybody kind of, you know, mull yeah. it over. It's got to see if it gets some traction. So they threw out some pretty aggressive uh, tax hikes, the greatest tax hikes or the biggest tax hikes since 1993. That's a, that's a big deal. So um, three weeks later now, though, what's been in the news this week, which has been very refreshing, is the Senate Democrats have said, and especially the moderate Democrats have said, hey, we get it. You want, you, we need to increase some taxes. Uh, we're okay with that. But we're going to be really careful here. We're not going to overdo it. We're going to be very targeted. And there was several quotes from some senators. We won't get into the minutia here. Um, but they, the big quote this week is, there's no room for error. And that was from the Maryland senator that, I can't, forgot his name at the moment, I apologize. Van Hollen, yeah. Van Hollen. And, and I think that's good. Matt, yeah, I mean, because there's only 50 of them. They need everyone to pass it yeah. with the vice president um, uh, voting. So they can't lose one. And and so, yes, which is good news, because hopefully it's going to take some bipartisanship to get this done um, if they do it. And it's going to not be what Biden's gone out and asked for. My biggest thing in the bill, I'll just is was not just the tax hikes but that he wants to hire 87,000 IRS agents to go mm. do audits. And there's a big belief amongst Biden's team that, um, and they're relying on some some studies that um, there's a ton of tax fraud out there and people unfairly underreporting taxes, particularly among high net worth individuals. And that if they just go audit the heck out of them, they'll create way more revenue than they spend in employing these 87,000 agents. So yeah. that was a, a big push to I know it's part of the bill also yeah and um, I will I will just uh, make one more comment on that particular note you have to take that with a grain of salt if I may say it that way because the accounting industry is got a huge demand and very little supply the big accounting firms our accounting firm all over the country they can't find enough workers. I don't know where the IRS is going to find 87,000 people that are qualified. And it's going to take them um, two to three years to get those 87,000 people functional and operational. And so our goal has always been, and we talk about it on the show quite a bit, is there's a happy medium. We want to be aggressive, but not create a, put a target on our back. And I think far too many accountants are conservative in nature, just that's the way they were born and raised, but they aren't, they aren't aggressive enough. And so I still think there's a lot of room for some quality tax planning and 87,000 agents, if they even can find them and get them trained, that doesn't bother me. doesn't worry me. My clients, you're yeah. going to be fine. Yeah. We're about doing good tax planning and tax strategies that work and are legit. So if you do get audited, you're fine. Yeah. Um, I, I will say there are a lot of clients who are just sloppy. They're yeah. taking the right deduction expenses. They're just not keeping good records and they're bookkeeping. Yeah has been yeah. is what I'm worried about for some clients but yeah. sloppy sloppy Joe sloppy Joe <laughs> that's an Adam Sandler uh, Saturday Night Live special he is the uh, lunch lady 
Slappy Joe's. Slappy Joe's. I know how you like them extra sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is so talented. For those of you that think, all right, these SNL characters are just, you know, potty humor actors. Uh, Adams is really musically talented as, as almost as much as his acting skills, just like Jack Black. I mean, those guys can play the guitar yeah. and hit their notes. And even though it's comical in nature, I want to get a hats off. You know, that's okay. that's a that's a tough. You need a little tip of the hat to Adam tip of the Sandler. Hat. Yeah. Tip of the hat. <laughs> yep. There you go, Adam. Okay. Text me All later right. and to give me. I, I gave you a shout out, Adam. You can text me later, and you're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Legal tip. Anything good? What'd you come across this week? Anything good? Just a quick legal tip? Something to keep us yeah, out of a lawsuit me, or something to? Uh, it's an IRA tip, but it's a it's a law. Oh. So that's that's a legal tip. <laughs> Sounds like a stretch to me, but all right, okay. <laughs> well, you know, this is one I I run into quite a bit. Is there's a a misconception about moving retirement accounts, and I'm going to give you two quick ones that are kind of cause problems that are kind of out there. But one. Roth, I, let me just make this tip. This is good. Roth IRAs are forever Roth IRAs. Once you go Roth IRA, you can't go back. Once you start a Roth IRA, it's always a Roth IRA. Can I change it to a traditional IRA? Absolutely not. Um, can I recharacterize my Roth IRA conversion? Can't do that anymore. Can I move my Roth IRA to a Roth 401k? I have a solo 401k. I want to move my Roth IRA to my Roth solo k. Nope. Roth IRA and the funds in them are always Roth IRAs. Now, you can go Roth 401k to a Roth IRA, but once it's in a Roth IRA, it's stuck. Now, Roth IRAs are awesome, so don't stress, but um, I, I see a lot of clients, particularly clients with solo 401ks that may have a Roth IRA, try to move their Roth IRA into the Roth solo 401k, and it's like, you can't do it. It's just not allowed. So there's a little legal tip on the, you know, my favorite account, the Roth IRA. Yeah, and I would always be a Roth IRA. Can I add one amendment, Senator from Arizona? Yes, without okay. objection. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I would uh, just, I had a really uh, great call uh, yesterday with a, uh, I don't want to say his name because uh, he is a YouTube influencer and he's out there and he will probably do some collaboration down the road. But um, what was interesting, and I think some of you, listening here may be facing the same quandary and he's had some success the last couple of years and he's like mark where do i put my money i can't get a straight answer from anyone and i said well i'm not a financial advisor but i can tell you what my successful clients are doing what i'm doing and just take that for what it's worth and do your research yeah. and make an educated decision on your own um and what's nice about that is clients appreciate that perspective because I'm not selling anything. I'm not selling a product. And so they can say, okay, that's fair. You know, there was no hidden agenda. But what we got to yesterday is like, well, what should I fund first? And this is a very successful person. And he goes, I just can't seem to get a straight answer anywhere. And I said, if there's two things you fund first before anything else, put your money in your Roth every year. Max it out, whatever. And well, I make too much money. Nope. You can do the backdoor Roth. I even sent him my video on it. He's like, oh my gosh, no one ever told me this. And then mm -hmm. and then I said, let's get some fees paid to your kids for helping you in your side hustle or small business, fund their Roth, and any contributions can come out tax free for college with no penalty. And then number two, fund your health savings account. So I want everybody in your family to have a Roth and everybody to have an HSA, a health savings account. Now there's some tricks to, and we've done shows specifically dedicated to those two topics but when matt says once you have a roth you can't get out of it and he said that's not a bad thing like matt said that's a good thing and i want yeah. every client of mine to have a roth i have a roth matt has a roth and you can have a day job with a 401k and still have a roth so there's ways to do this and i hope that many of you that are trying to figure out where to deploy your money you start with those two vehicles now what we put in the back seat discussion for another show. I gave him some thoughts on what I'd invest in uh, mm -hmm. or what I see my clients doing, but another show. So. Okay. Okay. All right. The trifecta. trifecta. Yes. Not to be confused with the pantavlet. Uh, What's the pantavlet? Well, my sunny boy, uh, the pantavlet. <laughs> it's well known. <laughs> now, I've got to do this in a Scottish accent. I don't know if I can do Mike Myers justice here. The pantavlet. It's a well-known organization run by the most wealthy. 
even <laughs> talk about five, five most rich. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do a Scottish accent. I need bright wires. Where is he? They meet triumphantly at the secret mansion in Colorado known as the Meadows. And uh, <laughs> that's the Pentavlet, the five most wealthiest people in the world. The Pentavlet. Yeah, who are those people? Well, I think it's the Queen, the Vatican, the Rothschilds, the Gettys, <laughs> and Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Before he went tits up. <laughs> So uh, anyway, oh. so if you if you haven't seen so, so I Mar- Mary an expert, yeah, uh, okay, yeah. So I Mary an expert, yeah. It's a classic, 1990s classic, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I made my millennial kids watch it the other night. And they're like, "Huh, that wasn't too bad." I'm like, "You're right. Your dad has good taste." So yeah. anyway, that was the impetus for Mike Myers using that voice for Shrek because his oh. wife his wife said he'd get in the bathtub and start talking Scottish. And yeah. He's like, <laughs> I want some haggis. Make me some haggis, woman. And then he, yeah. he came up with the, the ogre, the ogre in Shrek. So so I married an expert or was the impetus for Shrek. All right. Okay. So here's the the trifecta. Matt, why don't you describe it while I draw? Okay. Let's do a little Pictionary okay. here. Okay. Now, trifecta meaning three parts. Okay. All right. Now, the first thing to realize if you're looking on a piece of paper or just you want to sketch one out for yourself is draw a line down the middle. Okay. And we got left side, right side. And we're going to talk about what stuff you put on the left side versus stuff that goes on the right side. And there's a tax and asset protection reason on why we're going to put stuff in one place or the other. Okay. Now, oh, now Matt, let me say, okay. let me say, right. if for those watching and for listening, you can watch this on YouTube. So just go type trifecta in YouTube and put Sorensen or Kohler in there and it'll help narrow it down if there's other trifectas out there, I don't know. But to me, there's no other trifecta than this. But um, for those listening on the podcast, don't stress, you can watch this on YouTube and but I'm gonna we're gonna describe it as visually as best possible. Okay, keep yeah, going. So I got a line down the middle. It, yeah, you can think through it conceptually as we're describing it here, just on even on audio. So okay, okay. So we got the line down the middle, you, and now you've got a left side and a right side. And we're gonna put different things on each side here in a moment. But underneath it all is your trust. Okay, okay. this is your estate plan. Your trust, your revocable living trust, is gonna own all this stuff on top, whether it's on the left side or whether it's on the right side. Okay, got it. So there's a now, box, that's a box at the bottom. So you think of it like a bucket at the bottom or a box with a line at the very top of the box in the middle going straight up the paper. Yep. Okay, all right. There you go. Now, if you don't have a trust, this is just you personally, just draw yourself a cute little stick figure, you know, okay. and uh, and it's you. And maybe you, and you know, you add in the trust later, you know, it is estate planning special right now at KQS Lawyers, where you can get a few hundred bucks off your estate plan. We get to a whole trust, powers of attorney, living will, you know, kind of the pull the plug document, um, will, all that stuff, all included 300 bucks off our regular pricing for that. Uh, good for like another couple weeks. Yeah, ten yep. days. Okay, we do it once a year. It's our eleventh year in running, and so I'd like to think of water flows downhill, money mm. and ownership flows downhill, and you need a foundation before you build a house, before you build a building, before you build your empire. Mm. Everybody wants to build an empire, large or small. Yeah, and you want to leave a legacy, and you want your own little empire. And so the foundation is critical to get going as soon as possible. Now, we're going to talk about the benefits of the trifecta in a moment and how we're going to use this trust strategically. But if you're watching on YouTube, I put a second little smaller box of equal width below revocable living trust and put 1040. I also put a little small box but below 1040 that says personal bank account. Because I want all of your investments and your whatever you're doing up above on this left side and right side that Matt's going to describe to flow downhill. I want to let, when you're ready to buy underwear and groceries, it comes out of your personal bank account. And all the money you're making up above flows down through your trust onto your 1040 and into your personal <laughs> bank account. Okay, that's the foundation. Okay. All right, Matt. All right, now let's distinguish between the left and right side. Okay. Okay, on your left side, we're gonna call that operations. Okay. What type of income is that? 
Okay, that's going to be ordinary income. Right. All right. So this is ordinary income. So we think of operations, think of a business. You know, maybe you're a service business or you sell goods. You're getting a 1099 for drive an Uber. Um, you have a, uh, you know, you could have multiple businesses over here, or whatever it w may be. Yeah, or your W-2. Let's think of yes. this as your money you're making every day to cover the nut. Whatever yep. that monthly nut is. How do you pay the bills? Yep. And we're going to divide this left side into some sub sub areas. But really, we're making money to pay the bills. That's the left yep. side. We're making money yep. to invest money. Yeah. And I, you know, and I had a, well, I'll come back to this. I have a good, okay. good question All a right. client raised about the trifecta. Okay. So, okay. Now, on the right side, okay. we have assets. Okay. And this could be sometimes called passive income over here. Okay. Love it. And now, the, let me say a couple reasons why we're trying to distinguish between the two. First, assets, we want to have asset protection, right? We want to keep our assets separate from our operations. Because if I have operational businesses, um, let's say I'm a contractor, all right? And we have a lot of contractors doing well right now, you know? Yeah, um, so busy. Yeah. And, you know, something goes wrong on a job. You get sued. You don't want to be holding that all of your assets in the same company that you do your operations. So we want to separate these two things out. So okay. we're going to push assets, maybe your rentals or other stuff over here on the asset side. Okay. Now, for those that are driving down the road or on a treadmill, I have just overemphasized this line in the middle of the paper and just colored it in. It's like Pictionary. I'm just overemphasizing and <laughs> bolding this line because this is a wall. We want to treat this like a wall. I want to keep assets on the right, and I'm putting a little arrow pointing to the right, and, a, and operations on the left. I don't want to set up an LLC to own my rental and also run my construction company or my realtor business. I don't want the restaurant to be in the same entity as the building itself. I want separation. Yep. Okay. Now. Okay. So. Yeah. And it goes from there. That's it. That's the basic yeah. trifecta: operations, assets, holdings. Yep. And okay. and assets could be a a brokerage account uh, in your personal name. It could be. It's going to be your retirement accounts are over here too. Okay. We're going to have a little uh, area here on the right side for your retirement accounts and HSA, and like Mark talked about. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but there's another reason. It's not just the asset protection nature of it. Okay, right? hold it. Okay, so about what you said, let's focus on that for mm -hmm. a minute. The number one, well, I don't know if the number one reason. There's a number of reasons to <laughs> honor and respect the trifecta. Number one, I'm not saying is the greatest, but it's we're going to go mm -hmm. through this list. So I'm going to put this down below. Number one reason for the trifecta is asset protection. Okay. Do you want to say anything more about asset protection before we yeah. go on to reason number two? Yeah. B bottom line on asset protection, pro keep your assets separate from places that can create liabilities. That is what asset protection is all about. Mm -hmm. How do I keep my assets in a place where if I get a liability, no one can get over here? That's what we're doing. You keep this line here. Do not connect them. The only way that these assets are connected to your operations is that underneath the trifecta here, you happen to be the underlying owner. But that's not gonna cause your assets to be subject to a lawsuit from something you're doing on operations. So, okay. And I wanna add to that asset protection comment by saying this, a revocable living trust does not give asset protection. Oh, or there's some good reasons for a trust and why it's part of the trifecta, which we'll come to but one of them is not asset protection. In fact, asset protection is on the left and right side. For example, I'm gonna put a little circle here on the left yeah. that we're gonna to come to in a minute, but this might be my ink. I'll just call it ink, S Corp, LLC, Tyx is an S Corp, whatever. Um, this little company has a veil around it too. So that if I'm out operating, I've got a veil of protection. There's an entity there. And then on the right side, I might have an entity to hold an asset and that'll have a, a LLC, for example, to hold an asset.
but they're owned by the trust, but the trust itself does not create asset protection. So I want to create provide that distinction. Okay. Okay. Mr. Sorensen. Okay. Do we want to get into the second reason? Sure. Not in order of importance. Again, yeah. you know, I, I, don't I don't even want, know what you're going to say. I don't want asset protection and tax planning to feel like one's, oh. you know, better than the other. Okay. So you're going to go taxes. Right. You just said it. Is that number two? Yeah. Okay. Taxes. Okay. Why That's do we need to try back for taxes? Your operational income is taxed differently than your asset income or your passive income. Mm. There's different strategies and reasons you're going to run things through different types of entities. Okay. So if you're being sloppy and lazy, not respecting the trifecta. Sloppy, sloppy and Joe. You, yeah. And you're, you're running operational income. Let's say the contractor example again, and do the same entity that owns a rental property. Well, not only have you done crappy um, asset protection planning, you've also kind of cut yourself short on your tax planning. You're going to be overpaying on taxes by not treating those things differently and running them through the right lane. Yeah. Now, some of you accountants out there are like, well, in my S Corp on the K-1, I can distinguish passive income from ordinary income or income subject to self-employment tax. I can still distinguish that in my entity that might be doing operations and holdings. Yes, that's true. But you've also muddied the waters because now we have audit protection issues which I think go hand in hand with taxes. Because if you're gonna put all of your operations and holdings through the same entity, even with some tricky or more complex bookkeeping, you could separate them, fair enough. But now if you get audited, they're looking at everything. You're opening up your whole kimono where 90% of audits are very targeted. They're looking at one entity. Well, by separating my tax planning into two sides, I've also separated the audit exposure. Also, a 1031 exchange is much more complex in an S corporation, if not difficult or impossible, where I could do a 1031 exchange in a more creative format with an LLC on the right side. I don't want building gains. I don't want to face the utilities doctrine, general utilities doctrine. I'm talking to you accountants out there. Now, some of you are like, <laughs> what the crap is Mark talking about? I'm talking techie for my accountants out there because they may go, well, Matt, I can put them all in the same entity. Sure, but you've just created problems on building gains, 1031 exchanges, you've got a more mm -hmm. complex bookkeeping, you've got audit risk all in one entity, and I know you accountants are shaking your head going, okay, Mark, I get it. So there's a lot of good tax reasons to separate. Yeah, um, see, we, we wanna, by doing this left and right side, we wanna use the right entity and structure is a tool for the specific thing it's built for, right? Like the S Corp is built for the small business that's selling goods or selling a service. It's made for that. The Congress intended it for that. The tax planning around it is built for that. It works. Don't make it clunky by putting a rental property in it. Yeah. That's what the LLC is really built for. It's made for that. Now, yes, you know, like, I mean, there's lots of other tools you can use in your life for the wrong thing, but it's not made for that. It might get the job done, but man, it's going to be harder. People are going to be like, why the heck are you doing that? Yeah. You know, so. Anybody that's worked on a, in an auto body shop or on a farm knows the BFH. That's the big freaking hammer. And they're like, bring the hammer over here. Bring me the BFH. And the hammer, they try to use the hammer for everything. And yeah. that, it doesn't always work. We don't want to just, and this is where LegalZoom, which has done some good things in some ways, they've done some bad things in that they like, the LLC is the one size fits all. All you need is an LLC. You now just come here, we can set them up fast and easy. And all of a sudden yeah. clients get into it and they're like, well, that, the LLC is nice, but it's yeah. trying to use the, the hammer for everything and it, and it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. Okay. Can we stay with taxes for a minute? Yeah. Because I'm a geek. I, I know, taxes. you know, yeah. leave, leave, you know, yeah. you can't get away with that at a party or in any other place. Can you yeah. say that? Yeah, and, it, and someone would say, oh, yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I hope some of you have an opportunity to get to YouTube and uh, it'll be a link in the show notes if you're able to get to YouTube and watch some of my masterful artwork here. But everybody focus on the left side for a moment. 
That's the operational side. Now what I've done here is I've divided it into actually three sections. That's actually been an evolution of my trifecta over the last yeah. couple of years. Because what I've discovered is there's really three parts to operations. There's the day job in column one. And if you're married, one of you might have a W-2. If you're single, you might have a day job and in column two, a side hustle. A side hustle is kind of the gateway drug to full-time entrepreneurship. Some people pick up a side hustle because they can't make ends meet and then realize, oh my gosh, I'm really a small business owner. I kind of like this. And when COVID hits, you now make the side hustle, your full-time occupation, not out of choice, but out of necessity. And that's okay. Some people say, well, having a small business is risky. I'm like, having, not having a small business is risky. We sh one in three Americans now have a side hustle or more. Some, some statistics show 40% or more of Americans working Americans have a side hustle. That's a good thing. So column one is day job. Column two is side hustle, which could be a simple LLC. But column three is the full-time entrepreneur. And, and again, if married, one spouse may be the full-time entrepreneur, while the other spouse is the day job. So we've got those three columns feeding into our revocable living trust. So I want your trust to own your S Corp or own your LLC side hustle because we want to tie it all together for other reasons that are coming in our list. But tax planning is really three pieces on the operations side. Matt, why don't you talk about tax planning on the asset side because mm -hmm. I know there's a column over here that you really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, so on the asset side, for many people, the one of the biggest assets you're gonna have over here on the asset side is your retirement account. So this could be your day job 401k or spouses. This could be your side hustle solo 401k or your full-time entrepreneur solo, solo 401k for those of you who are self-employed with no other employees. This could be your Roth IRA, your HSA, your kids account, you know, your spouse. This could be covered elves. I mean, lots of accounts are fitting over here and these are tax um, favorable vehicles, right? You're getting tax deductions in them. You're getting tax, uh, no growth as they're growing and the Roth accounts are coming out tax free. So there's all a bunch of tax planning and tax favoritism on building wealth in these accounts on your asset side. Okay, and so what I did for those visually, I took the right side and created two columns. So there's a little mini line on the right side dividing that side into two subparts. The first column is called tax-free or before tax. And that's all those little vehicles Matt was talking about. This is an area that every American is gonna have by the time they retire. They're gonna at least have something over there. Now our goal is yeah. to make sure you have a lot of something, but yeah, there's yeah. something. So this is the tax for your before tax. The second column on the right side is the after tax column. And that's gonna be money that we make in our day job or in our small business that we don't defer into a tax, perform, uh, tax preferential vehicle and we might buy a rental property. This is the little rental we own down the street, or maybe that brokerage account, or our little cryptocurrency account, or just little investments that are making money that need their own little LLC. And so I've got a little circle here that says LLC, and I've got rentals, I've got investments, I've got farmland, second homes, Airbnb, because an Airbnb is a great cash flowing vehicle that you get to benefit from and create cash flow from and wealth. That's a perfect fit over here on this second column on the right side. Okay, Matt, what would you say? Okay. You want anything you want to add to the tax reasons before we go to the fourth reason? We like the crypto. Now, uh, on the, the tax reason, what I'll say is another common asset that's going to be on the asset side is going to be your rental properties. Mm. All right. Or maybe it's a personal brokerage account. All right. Now, those are passive assets. 
we don't need to do too complex of planning in terms of an S corp or something like that. These typically are going to flow through onto your personal return. There's no company level tax. There's not a payroll report you're doing. You know, they're typically flowing through onto your personal return, um, and they're already tax tax less, right? Rental income and your rental properties. You know, you're getting all these expenses on it. You're getting depreciation. There's capital gain income when you sell it. Same thing with your personal brokerage account. You know, you're getting dividend tax rates, which are lower, and you're getting um, and not subject to self-employment tax, and you're getting um, um, capital gain income when you sell those. So these things don't have self-employment tax involved in them, which is one of the taxes we're trying to plan for and minimize over on the asset side. Um, now, let's review, and I've got number one reason for the, the trifecta is asset protection, number two is tax planning, number three is audit protection, and before I say number four, I want to just throw out a quick thought. I had a phone call two days ago with the client with some substantive assets. I mean, this was a $10 million client. Now, I have phone calls. I had a phone call with a client on Friday that was like college student. It was a young couple just getting married. What do we do? And I brought up the trifecta. $10 million client. I started with the trifecta. And I started building this diagram with a little on PowerPoint on a Zoom call, which all of our attorneys will do in a consult with our clients. And he said, Mark, in all the law firms and accountants I've ever met with, I have never seen someone diagram it out where it made sense. I love this. And he said, can I get a copy of it? And I said, of course you're going to get a copy. That's what you're paying for. And and can some of you believe that? Isn't that amazing, Matt? I mean, there's just, yeah. this, just having a visual, a picture says a thousand words, you know? Yeah. So Yeah, it really does. Um, you know, I had an interesting question from a client who um, came to the self-directed IRA summit. I, I loved it when he explained what he came for. He's like, I came to kind of learn about you know, doing a Roth IRA for my kids maybe. And he's like, and then I sat through and I heard about the trifecta and solo case and all these other things. He's like, man, I came, I came in for the snacks, like the Roth IRA for the kids. And I left wanting the whole Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I love that quote. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was good. And, um, but this is a client that has quite a bit going on, you know, good, good income, lots of stuff moving around, business assets, you know, and, and where, where you can really put it together and it can make sense, but also you see the efficiency of it and you see the rationale behind it. You see the asset protection and tax planning we're talking about. But one of the questions I got, and I can't remember if it was from him or someone else, but I had a question from someone that says, how do I manage like where my money, if I'm doing really good over here on my operation side, how do I get stuff over to the asset side? Like, what's the process oh of my that? Gosh. How should I be planning that? I love it. Matt, do you know my number four that I was going to say was right on this? Gosh. Okay. I love you, man. <laughs> they love you. Good partners. We are. We are. Oh, my gosh. I love you. Okay. <laughs> number four. Now you may not think this is going to answer your question, but it is. Number four, reason for the trifecta, it defines our bookkeeping. Okay. Defines bookkeeping. And bookkeeping is the heart of how money is moved around. Now, I have a little example, Matt. Mm -hmm. Some people okay. see the trifecta and they see, oh my gosh, I need an account for this. I need an account for that. My kids are going to have bank accounts and I'm going to have a bank account for the LLC and a bank. Oh my gosh, Mark, you're making my life more complex. And I go, no, 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 no. Let's say you went home and said, I am sick of all these chest of drawers in my, in my bedroom. There's too much going on in here. And you started to just try to organize your clothes on the floor. You're like, I don't want any chest of drawers. I, I, I don't want all this furniture. I'm not going to go to Ikea. Screw it. Even though they have good Swedish meatballs. I love those Swedish meatballs. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go throw everything on the floor and organize it. How would it feel? It'd be a nightmare, right? You wake up the next morning. You're looking for socks. You're looking for underwear. Where's my t-shirts? Where's my jeans? Bookkeeping are the chest of drawers of a bedroom. The bookkeeping mm. lets us know where all the money is. And if I need to move my shirts over to this drawer, or I need to move my socks over to that drawer, I can do it and understand where they go. Bookkeeping actually sets you free. You come into your bedroom and you're like, oh my gosh, I know where everything's at. 
And with online banking and apps for Chase, B of A, and Wells Fargo, and many of the big banks out there, you can go to your app and look at where all of your clothing is on one app. Where are all mm -hmm. my accounts? So if I need money on the right side, I take a draw. I just move money from the S Corp operation account down to my personal account. And then I move that personal account money up to fund a new LLC or to make a contribution to my HSA or to go put money over into an investment account or to buy a new home or to buy an RV. So the, the, the personal bank account is kind of the, the transactional center where everything goes through that train station. So all the money goes down and then it goes over. And if you're making money on the right side and you need more operational money, it goes down and then back up to operations. We rarely want to move money from left to right without letting it take a pit stop at our personal mm -hmm. account. That's where we organize everything. Matt, thoughts? What do you what I love that. I love the chest of drawers. Um, I think that the the bank account thing, and that that's, you know, this is the the pushback some people may have, because they're like, I just want one LLC and I'm just going to jam everything through it. Okay. How well are you going to track the performance of your business? Like you're not going to feel what's going on in that business. If you got too much stuff messed up into it, like the rental property owned in there, are you really tracking the income and expense on it? No. But if I got an LLC with the rental property in it and I know the rent coming in goes into it, I know the expenses are coming out of it. I can see pretty quickly and I feel month to month whether that property's doing well or not. Right. Mm -hmm. But if it's all mixed up and jumbled together, you're, it's harder to see on the fly. And as small business owners, we don't have the benefit of having a finance and accounting department that's run these numbers for you and telling you where you're, what's performing in your business and what's not. It's freaking you. Okay. And your bank accounts, and by separating these things up, it also keeps you more in touch with your business. It's not just good bookkeeping for tax purposes, it's good bookkeeping and planning for performance of the assets you have and the operational businesses you're running. Oh my gosh, I just added number five, performance evaluation. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I just, I took your words and I kind of, I, if you're okay so with that. I, I consent, these, they can be used with the permission of Matthew Sorensen Inc. Not okay. to be used without though, by the way. With the pr prior express written consent? Yeah, and Major okay. League Baseball too. They want, they want to stay on it too. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're defining our bookkeeping and it allows us to evaluate the performance of our different operations and assets because it's not muddied, it's clean. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say number six, it actually relieves stress and provides, relieves stress and provides organization. Okay, now let me add something for those that are able to watch on YouTube. I used a red line and I started to show money flow options. I got a red line going from the S Corp down to my personal account and then out and up to an LLC to invest in some real estate or a, a brokerage account or some unique gold, silver, crypto. I also took money and showed, oh, from the LLC, I can take money out of my side hustle and go and put it in my home for home improvement. I can take money from my S Corp and directly contribute to a solo K, an HSA, or a Roth. So when you meet with one of our tax attorneys in just a maybe an annual checkup, we're gonna pull up your, your diagram. Every client, guys, here's what's cool with our estate planning special. With our estate planning special, we build you a diagram. You're gonna get a consultation with an attorney that says, how do you want your estate distributed if something happens to you, and what do you have? Because if we don't know what you have, how can we fund the trust? And we're gonna hand this off to one of our paralegals for additional support after if you need it for what's called trust funding. If we create a trust and just put it in the drawer, it's not worth anything but we wanna use it, we wanna fund it. And if we have a diagram, when you do an annual checkup with your insurance agent, your accountant, our office, if you so choose to do so, we wanna build a relationship where every year you do a checkup and you go, hey, look at what I bought, look at what I sold, let's update my diagram, beep, 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 beep. We print it out, we have a copy, you have a copy, and a picture again says a thousand words. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Now you took two on the list. I don't think that's fair. I'm not. Well, I mean, it is my birthday, so. <laughs> <laughs> Plays the birthday card. Unbelievable. I did not expect that response. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's only good one day a year, so. <laughs> yeah, might as well use it for what it's worth. Okay. I'm pretty much going to walk around doing whatever I want to and be like, well, it is my birthday, so. Yeah, yeah, it is my birthday. Okay, I'm going to add number seven. Number seven, and I'll read these all again at the very end. Uh, for those on YouTube, you're seeing the page written up there on the screen. Um, number seven is estate planning coordination. Estate planning coordination. Now, I'll say a couple words about this. I'm sure Matt can uh, add to it. There's a lot to be said here. But as you can see, back to the diagram here, I'm going to add some lines from the Revocable Living Trust. I want your trust to own everything, not you. Now, when I say everything, I mean any sort of entities, titled assets, recorded assets, maybe even DMV assets like a car, an RV, a houseboat, a ski boat, a cabin, ranch land, whatever you're buying, I want your trust to take ownership, not you. So I'm adding some lines from the trust over to a personal home. Matt mentioned a brokerage account. So I'll put some little dollar signs over there. I want yeah. the trust. So on those, yeah. Yep. It could be on as the owner or it could just be the beneficiary, mm -hmm. you know, in the event of your passing. So True. same thing for your retirement accounts also. Yep. So you may not, and you may list your spouse first uh, on beneficiary designations and your trust second. That's actually more common for those that have a spouse. Um, but that's coordinating the trust is, even on like the bank accounts and retirement accounts, the trust may not own it, but it's the beneficiary um, after your death. Yeah. Personal home, bank accounts, retirement accounts, and I'm gonna add LI, life insurance. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there's a place and a purpose and a reason for life insurance, but it's going to depend on your situation and age as to what type of insurance you're gonna get whole other topic. We are generally believers in some degree of life insurance, and you can look at some of our prior podcasts to go over that topic. But if I do have life insurance, I want the trust to be the beneficiary of it. And like Matt said, spouse first, then trust. So all of these assets, if you're able to view this now on YouTube, you'd see all these assets with the little arrows going down into my trust so that I don't own anything, my trust is the real owner. And that coordinates things, so if you pass away, become disabled, you're in a car accident, your trust can take over. Just maybe for a short period of time. Maybe you're six feet under and it's time to distribute some of your assets. You choose, no probate, no court, and your trust takes over and brings all your affairs together. So the lawyers get less, the government gets less. Biden wants to fiddle with the estate planning exemption. Uh, should be respectful. President Biden wants to play with the <laughs> estate planning exemption. So we've got all these assets that we want to coordinate. So I called it estate planning coordination. That's mm -hmm. number seven. You want to add anything to that, Matt? Yeah, and remember, the estate plan is going to avoid probate. By using the trust and outlining what you want to happen to your estate when you pass away and by having it all organized in a clean way like this it's easier for your loved ones when you pass on to come in and be like oh well we, we're gonna sell this asset we're keeping this you know and they're all segmented out in these different entities for whether it's your rentals and your operational business and um on your, your bank accounts or retirement accounts so by using the trifecta you make it easy on whoever your trustee is when you pass on for coordinating your estate, selling the assets, moving them around to your, your beneficiaries and heirs um, and not having to go to a probate court to get this done. Yep, love it. I've got an article in my blog that's actually gotten some pretty good traction. It's interesting. It gives everyone an update on Prince, uh, the famous yeah. 80s singer, Purple Rain. Mm -hmm. um, uh, does he Little sing the 99 Corvette. song? Like the dun, dun, 99, we're going to party in 1999. Is that his tune? Uh, I think I that know. might be. 
Yeah. More of a little red Corvette fan, but yeah. yeah. A little red Corvette Prince. Anyway, he died about five years ago without a will or trust, still in probate. The IRS is now going at it for a tune of about $34 million. And uh, it's been a huge mess. The biggest probate case in Minnesota history because he had no plan. Now, not all of us are going to face numbers and craziness like that. But any craziness can really be a challenge for the family that you leave behind or friends. Whoever. If you don't choose. Yeah. It's going to be a mess. Okay. Yeah. Now, number eight. Can I add number eight? Yeah. I love this one. This is a big one. I'll I'll say it, and then you can describe it. You ready for that? This is putting you on the spot. You ready? All right. I'm ready. Number eight, privacy. Mm. Why would privacy be a benefit of the trifecta? Do you have anything, or do you want me to help you out? Birthday boy. Do you want me to help you out? (laughs) (laughs) Well, um... Why don't you go? Because this is you're the privacy, you know, you're more of a camouflage kind of guy, you know. I, I am. Um, I'm more of a bulletproof vest kind of guy, but that's true. Okay. Um, yeah, you're, you're different. more of a camouflage kind of yeah. guy. They are yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Privacy is a part of asset protection, it does not replace asset protection, it enhances asset protection. Now, when you have the trifecta, it makes privacy even easier because. This trust is not going to be the Mark and Jennifer Kohler Living Trust. Heck no. I might name it Purple Rain Trust. Huh? Get that? Mm-hmm. From Prince, yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't think that name got used. I think. <laughs> yeah, it was Prince, wide open. Prince, Prince didn't use it. You're good. <laughs> no, no. It could be Blue Horseshoe Trust. What's that from? I have no idea. I'll give you a hint. Michael Douglas. Wall Street, no. 1988. Okay. Blue Horseshoe. Oh. That was the company. Blue Horseshoe. Yeah. Was that Blue Horseshoe? Yeah, Blue Horseshoe. Are you sure it was Blue Horseshoe? It was Blue. No, it wasn't. You Google it while yeah. I finish. Okay. okay. That was All Blue right. Horseshoe. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. But you're going to name your trust something anonymous, something that's indiscriminate. It doesn't relate to your name because anything that's on public title is actually going to be owned by your trust. So it may be harder for someone to bring a lawsuit and find all your assets. Now, if you're a bad enough person and the lawsuit's big enough, they're gonna find all your assets, but it's gonna take some work. And it doesn't allow you to hide from the IRS. It doesn't allow you to commit fraud. We're not talking about laundering money, but we've, we're trying to hide what we don't want easily found. Now, in my operations side, I'm Mark, jo- Mark J. Kohler, Inc. Go ahead. You know, find it. I want you to find my company on the left side. But you want to go find my rental property that's owned in a state that I will not mention? <laughs> you, you could start searching and you'll never find the name because it's not going to have Kohler in it. So I'm going to use privacy for entities that hold assets and privacy for my trust. But for operations, I want branding. I want trademark. I want it out there. Um, and privacy is going to allow us to use addresses and mail forwarding to to create additional privacy where people can't find where these assets mm-hmm. reside. Um, yeah. Okay, was I right? Blue Horseshoe, what's the verdict? You're right. Blue Horseshoe loves Anacott Steel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you that go. That was the code. Cool. Go, yep. Good old Gordon Gecko. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Is there a ni- Boy, I wish I, we could come up with 10 reasons. We've only got eight. Yeah. Do you have another good and one? Whew, we, yeah, we do need to have 10. Yeah. Um, I, I like it. I like it for, I mean, we kind of said planning, but it, it keeps you organized. It keeps your other professionals yeah. organized. Oh, got I got that? one. I kept, I put relieve stress provides organization. How about it provides understanding? Yes. So okay. now I know. Understanding and clarity. Understanding like, and you, clarity. Ooh, so you're, it. you know, your lawyer and your accountant knows what the heck's going on. And your financial advisor, if you have Oh, one. ooh, ooh. And I got number 10. Saves money. Ooh. Boom. Uh-huh. Boom. Uh, I mean, boom. Yeah, you got to you gotta end with that. You got to eat with Save that. money, exclamation point. Yeah. And I, I, I bet you you can come up with a reason why it saves money. You know how much time you're going to waste trying to do this? Oof. Well, we already said it saves taxes. Okay. Yeah. That's money. Right? Yeah. That's the number one. <laughs> yeah. The number one 
business expense for any successful business owner is taxes. Like that's your number one expense. Yeah. That's the silent partner you never asked for, but you got that just gets a cut of whatever you're doing. Yeah. Okay. But, um, but so that, that's a given, but there's a lot of other savings you're going to get here in terms of efficiencies. Mm. Okay. This thing's way more efficient. It's going to take less time for you to keep this organized. Obviously, you're saving money from an asset protection and a lawsuit and assets getting disappearing because you've got your assets and operations in the same thing. Here, something happens in the operational business. It's contained over there. That liability's stuck. It ain't getting over the asset side. That just saved you some money. Yeah. Um, your professionals that are going to see this and you know oh. your, your accountant or anybody, you know how much time they spend that they probably bill you for to try and figure this crap out, especially yep. a lot of you that are very active and change things year to year. Yeah. You're paying for that. Oh, I've had so many clients say, can I show this to my accountant? Yes. That's what you're supposed to do. How about showing it to your insurance agent? Oh, now I know where the umbrella goes. We need to have insurance coverage here. We can get rid of insurance coverage here. And your, your family better understands your affairs if something happens to you. I, in our binder that you're going to get with an estate plan, say you choose our server. Let me just tell you right now, we're typically $1,500 for an estate plan in any state. That's with an hour or more with one of our attorneys designing a diagram for you, getting your information, and drafting a will, trust, and all these bells and whistles. During the special, 300 bucks off. I know many of you are maybe watching this video or hearing this after the Memorial Day special we hold annually. So it's 1200 bucks during this one month period every year, 11th year running. But still, 1500, I have people go, it can't be that good. I paid four grand for mine. I paid three grand for mine. You guys are cheap. So that are for, therefore you must have a crappy product. Nope, we have spent 20 years crafting a binder with tabs and sections and pieces and parts. Mine and Matt's blood, sweat and tears literally is in every paragraph of our document. We have been through it over and over, over 20 years. And that's what you're getting the product of, the byproduct of is all that work drafting yeah. this thing. So the yeah. point is- And though, all those other yeah. clients who have used it and have passed on and have actually implemented the trust, right? That's all in there too, yeah. of what matters. Yep. Not just some template that was found online. Yep, and the cover where I was going with all this, the first sheet in a little plastic cover sheet at the top of your estate plan binder is your diagram. Drew, our paralegal, I, we've instructed her in our any client file, uh, find their diagram, print it out in color, put it in a, in a plastic cover sheet, and that goes on top of your estate plan. So this is just so, I, but it just saves money because it's not a big mess. People set up entities they don't have or need or, oh, well, what about this entity? Oh my gosh, is it on the diagram? Nope. Let's mm -hmm. see where it fits. Yep. Okay. 10. Okay. Wow. Sorry, I yelled out a little loud. Pro yeah. Corey, producer, you're gonna have to fix that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, 10, <laughs> I love it. Um, 10 benefits. 10 benefits. Of the trifecta. Mm -hmm. um, and I liked how you said it is to be honored and respected, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we're not, we're not asking you to worship the trifecta, just honor it and respect it. <laughs> and, I like and I think if you, uh, for those of you that are, that have a lot of stuff right now and feel overwhelmed, this helps you keep it organized. It heaps, helps you keep your brain focused on where where stuff goes. Um, all the ten reasons we talked about. I just I just want to encourage people to keep planning this way. And even if you don't diagram this out, okay, we we want you to do that. We think so many of you are visual, but just implement the basic concepts of it. Operations on the left side, assets on the right side. Don't mix them into the same thing. Oh. It gets clunky for taxes and it screws up your asset protection planning. Okay, right. just that that one concept right there is what we start with with most clients is separating those two things out. Man, I had some so many good analogies and jokes here I didn't use during this. For example, yeah, the left sure. side is dating, the right side is marriage. Mm. See, left side is all operational, you know, it's kind of a little white yeah. man overbite dancing at night. You're out on the dance uh -huh. floor mm -hmm. looking at the real estate. Am I going to, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so Just right side is marriage. Weed in the dough. 
Weed in the <laughs> weed, you know, whatever. And keep, the it dough. Tight. Keep, keep it tight. You don't want to be out here. You don't want to nope. be out here. Just keep it tight. Keep it tight. <laughs> keep it tight. Um, also, I Will was going to say, what's funny, Matt said, some of you are visual. What Matt really meant to say is, guys are visual, and they want to see this. It'll make sense to them. They're going to get googly eyes seeing this. The women, they're going to feel secure. They're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I feel so much more secure because you communicated with me here. This communicates with me. The guys are like, ooh, lines, bubbles, charts, color. You had me a diagram. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Woo. All right. Well, that is our show today, people. Hopefully you enjoyed that. We hope that you have a professional that can help build your diagram. If not, give us a shout. We'd love to help bring it together for you. Just do an annual review at the least. Take it to all your professionals. We sure appreciate you. We're grateful you're here. We, we know we're dorks. We ham it up. Try to have fun with it. But uh, please, if you don't have a picture and your plan, uh, state plan in order, uh, give us a call. Uh, you can easily Google us, uh, kkoslawyers.com, kkoslawyers.com. Make an appointment. You might be out a couple weeks. That's okay. There's no rush. No bungee jumping or skydiving. What else is off limits? You can't. No. Yeah. What's dangerous? No, What's dangerous? Skydiving, can't climb Everest, you know. Or no, pretty much diving. high adventure stuff is yeah. off the table. Yeah. Race car driving. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Not wearing your mask in public. <laughs> oh, just kidding. I don't want to get into that topic. <laughs> Let's not go there, everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, just well, be careful. Well, thanks everyone, though. Yeah, <laughs> thanks everyone for listening. And um, give us a five-star review or like or subscribe or however you're watching it. Um, it help, does help other people find the show. And um, we'll be back next week with Open Forum mm-hmm. where we'll be fielding your questions. So if you're like, guys, I was hoping for Open Forum or, you know, get your questions in. Go to MainStreetBusiness.com, submit a question, click that link, and just type it in. You can even audio record one if you if you feel so inclined. Um, And then we'll be hitting questions next week on the Open Forum Show.